YMT Mountain News at 11. Good evening, I'm Justin Case. Heavy rain is creating a mess for parts of Kentucky tonight. Angela Rigert is in Rockcastle County, where some people say this is the worst flooding they've seen in a while. It's, it's unreal. I've never seen it like this before. It's simply shocking. Streets now looking like streams, pavement hidden under rushing water. We've had water this deep in town before. We've had water in our firehouse, some of the buildings down here in town, but it just came up really, really quickly. In Rockcastle County, inches of rain fell in a short amount of time. About 10 to 15 minutes later, it was like, wow, like it, it popped up all of a sudden. Mother Nature leaving behind nothing short of a mess. Broadhead, one of the hardest hit areas. My whole creek, half of my fields where my horses are, they're standing up on top of a hill. The neighbor's garden's all underwater. Uh, it's just, everything's flooded. Trees down, roads washed out, buildings partially underwater. And when the water goes down, debris is all you see. If you don't have to be out, stay at home. If you come up on high water, turn around. I would much rather you turn around or be delayed getting somewhere, having to take an alternate route than us having to come out and get you out of the water. With rivers already looking like this, the big concern, of course, is more rain in the next few days. That is something people are keeping a close eye on. Now that the ground is very saturated, the creeks and streams are running very high, I don't think it'll take much more rain to cause the waters to rise again. I'm afraid that we'll see this again before the weekend's over. Reporting in Rockcastle County, Angela Rigard, WYMT Mountain News. And the Broadhead community actually saw four and a half inches of rain between 4 p.m. and 9 p.m. this evening. We actually saw most of that rain, that four inches fell before six o'clock. Now you can notice this here. Powell County was another area that was hard hit today. Our friend Stevenson in this picture, really this video of flooding in his backyard and even over into Johnson County saw some flooding in the backyard over there as well. Thank you, Sarah, for sending in this photo. Now we do still have some aerial flood warnings. Powell Powell County is in this parts of Wolf County till 330 in the morning. Then of course you see Rock Castle northern part of Laurel County as well as in that aerial flood warning until 245 in the morning. Over the past six hours you can see those showers and storms slowly moving through the mountains. You can see that here. This is a six hour loop. Really rain has just been impacting the mountains for hours upon hours. And as we're scanning the skies now, I guess the good news is we're just seeing lighter rain move through the area. Hopefully we will see that start to really get out of here as we we head into the overnight hours. Temperatures into the upper 60s to lower 70s. Not too bad. That's really where we will remain as we head into the overnight hours. A big concern again going into tonight is going to be that visibility. You can already see low visibility and hazard. Jackson, Harlan, especially those low lying areas due to all that rain that we saw now. We're going to see some visibility issues into the overnight hours and early into your Friday as well. Maybe plan to leave a couple extra minutes early for that Friday morning commute. I'll break down that full forecast coming up in just a few short minutes. Justin. Page, thank you. Today marks day two of the murder trial of the man accused of shooting and killing Terry Stidham. Police say Harold Hayes murdered Stidham last August in the Combs community of Perry County. We talked with the family of Stidham and listened in as the prosecution and the defense made their cases. For Terry Stidham's family, they feel like they must be here, hoping that their loved one's death is not without justice. Well, it's been heart wrenching losing a child the way we lost him. But we're here to fight for Terry, and we're going to continue to fight. Prosecutors say they have surveillance video of Harold Hayes purchasing the same kind of ammo used to kill Stidham less than 24 hours earlier. They also got a warrant to record his phone calls. Here is Hayes talking with an unidentified woman. I'm in here, cousin. Why aren't you here? Yeah, I am. Sure am. Yeah, I am. Witnesses have identified Hayes as the man who killed Stidham, but the defense points to inconsistencies in their stories. Irregardless of which one of them may have said, I know Harold Hayes and it was Harold Hayes, because they contradict each other. The defense also says some of the evidence was mislabeled and that the people who initially called 911 never mentioned Hayes at all. During the phone, the 911 call, no name was mentioned. But that wasn't, that no name was mentioned during the 911 call. 
As the case moves forward, family members of Stidham know that regardless of the outcome, their loved one is never coming home. There's not going to be no closure for us. When you lose a child, there's no closure. But we're here fighting to try to keep another family from going through the pain and agony that we've experienced. Waiting with anticipation as a man's life and actions are judged. The trial lasted for more than five hours. We are told that more witnesses will take the stand Friday. The trial resumes at 9 tomorrow morning in Perry County Circuit Court. Court officials say the trial could conclude sometime tomorrow. For years, a Pulaski County family waited for justice. Today, the man convicted of killing their loved one and attacking two women with a machete learned his fate. A judge sentenced Cody Hall to 23 years behind bars. Listen to the letter Hall's attorney read at his sentencing today. It, it is his apology addressed to the Holbrooks family. I wish that there was some way that I could go back and change all that happened that morning, but that is not possible. I just hope that each person that was harmed in any way by me will be able to someday find peace. Family members say they are willing to forgive Hall because that's what their loved one would have wanted. The Commonwealth's attorney says Hall was high on meth at the time of the attack. A complaint about possible drug activity leads the Laurel County Sheriff's Office to a convicted felon, nearly 90 guns, and four separate DUI charges. Searching Donald Jones' home along East Highway 1223, deputies found marijuana, a large sum of cash, and 87 guns, two of which were reported stolen. Four people later showed up in his driveway. Deputies arrested Eddie Wilburn, Kristen Swanner, Heather Sizemore, and Robin Weaver for all appearing to be under the influence. Jones says he never realized he had so many guns in his house, nor did he know any of his visitors. They run my license and they said I was convicted felony. I don't know if I had any guns in the house. I said I might have two or three. With our drug dealers is that they generally will take in stolen property, including weapons, uh, to trade for drugs. So that's why uh, we feel like that there was such a large number of weapons at this residence. Jones is charged with possession of a handgun by a convicted felon, receiving stolen property and drug charges. The other four individuals face DUI charges as well. Police say five people were arrested in Knox County for engaging in organized crime. Barberville Police Department officers say after getting tips about possible stolen guns and methamphetamine trafficking, Michael Buchanan, Cody Abner, Jimmy Davis, Betsy Cecil, and April Collins were arrested at a home on Emanuel Hollow Road. Along with marijuana, suboxone, and other drugs and paraphernalia, police say they, they found guns they were looking for. And they had firearms. They had an AR-15 a 3030 and MK2. The 3030 and the MK2 were the stolen firearms. All five are being held at the Knox County Detention Center. Robin Holbrook died in a crash last week in McGoffin County. Today, his family and friends said goodbye. WYMT's Buddy Forbes talked to one of his co-workers who says his work as a physician assistant and dedication to the community will never be forgotten. Some people have jobs. And everybody called him Dr. Robin. Others have callings. It just wasn't a job for him. It was a, a passion. Those who knew Robin Holbrook say he was called to help others. That he was just wasn't there for the money or whatever. He was there to take care of the people. Until last week, when he died in a motorcycle crash. And days go on and he's not there. Then it sinks in, he ain't coming back. His loved ones came together Thursday to remember his legacy. Everybody felt special, you know. It was honey bun and, and sweet and this and that, you know. And everybody thought, well, you know, I'm special. Well, everybody was special to Robin. Though he was focused on his work at the Eula Hall Health Center in Grethel. Sometimes he'd say, you're overloading me, you know. And I said, Robin, that's job security. <laughs> they say he was always active in the community. He was just an outgoing person wherever he went. And always giving to others. He was just such a gentle, caring person, you know. Now they have to find a way to move forward. And truly, that's a way to honor Robin, you know, is to do what he wanted to do, to take care of his patients. Because they know it's what he would want. And that's all we can do. But they'll always keep his memory and his teachings alive. In McGoffin County, Buddy Forbes, WIMT Mountain News. 
Holbrook was escorted to the cemetery by Riding for the Sun, a Christian motorcycle ministry. SOAR hosted a meeting at Hazard Community and Technical College today. They called it Broadband and Barbecue. It was centered around wireless access in rural Appalachia. Panels were filled with companies and workers for those companies using high-speed broadband. The presentation highlighted the jobs available in the field and the importance of high-speed internet to the region. Broadband is a utility not unlike water, sewer, gas, you name it. In today's economy, without that, you can't exist and you can't thrive and succeed. An update on Kentucky Wired was given in the afternoon session. Officials are still optimistic it will be completed. Thursdays on the Triangle is back and organizers are not letting the rain get in the way of the first event back in Hazard. Now in its fifth year, Thursdays on the Triangle continues shining a light on small local businesses in our community. This year, the event kicked off with music from Jordan Allen and the Bellwethers. There was also local food, produce, locally made arts and crafts, and alcohol from Dueling Barrels Brewery in Pikeville. Organizers say although the event was moved under the tent next to City Hall, the fun did not stop. There's a part of me that kind of prefers it a little bit because it brings everybody a little closer, it gets a little louder, everyone's kind of talking a bit more. Um, there's a part of me that kind of loves that. A few years ago we did the Founders Day party and it rained and everyone had to get pulled in under the tents and it got it kind of ruckus, it was awesome. Thursdays on the Triangle is held every other Thursday in Triangle Park throughout the summer. The event has its own Facebook page and you can follow that to see what food, crafts and music will be at the park. Church of God Worship Center in Manchester offers a camp for teens every summer for free. This being the 13th year, 150 kids are already pre-registered, some representing churches from seven different states. Having invested more than $250,000, no child has ever been charged a dime. Associate Pastor Brad Stevens says it's funny to say, but God's plan all started while he was mowing the grass. One of the local kids went down the road with her mom and old beat up car that didn't look like it'd get to town and back, to be honest with you. And uh, right then, on that mower, I know it was God. And, and like I said before, it's because of how we, hindsight's 2020. But I know it was God. And he said, hey, I want you to do a camp. And I want you to do it for free. The camp runs from June 30th to July 4th. Coming up at 11, heavy rain continues along the Gulf Coast. Some places got a month's worth of rain in 24 hours. And more showers and storms are expected over the next few days. We'll break down that full forecast in just a few short minutes.